Well, thanks so much for, for having us here. First thing, I guess, if you look very closely, um, I'm not the beautiful Tammy Sullivan. Uh, I'm, I'm Jude Scott, CEO of uh, Cayman Finance. But uh, certainly we've recognized as a jurisdiction the, the importance of this type of technology. Uh, so it really is with great pleasure uh, that I'm, I'm here to just serve as a, as a stand-in moderator uh, on this very, very important panel here. Uh, with me, I also have uh, Bradley uh, Kruger, who's a partner at uh, OJ, uh, Cynthia Blanchard, uh, co-founder and president at uh, Hercules, uh, Andre Ebanks. He's a senior legislative policy advisor, Cayman Islands government. Uh, Charlie Kukernel, whom I'm sure you know as the CEO of uh, Cayman Enterprise City. And uh, Cindy O'Hara, uh, chief development officer at uh, Cayman Enterprise City. I'm conscious that we have the pleasure of being at the end of the day, so we're going to try and go very quickly uh, through it. Uh, we're going to run through uh, some questions and discussions that we think are, are going to be quite interesting and informative to you, but we're going to try and leave just a few minutes at the end as well in case you have other questions that you'd like to ask for the panel. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and maybe kick it off uh, with yourself, uh, Bradley. Obviously, there's been just a tremendous amount of uh, activity in this space with regard to fintech, cryptocurrency, uh, and the blockchain industry globally, as well as what we're seeing uh, in Cayman. Uh, specifically with regard to Cayman, what are the legal and regulatory considerations that blockchain technology companies or ICO issuers face in Cayman? Thanks, Jude. So the Cayman Islands continues to be a leading offshore financial services jurisdiction because of the business-friendly attitude of its lawmakers and a light-touch regulatory regime that has helped make it the number one offshore jurisdiction for hedge funds. Those conditions continue to remain in place to give the Cayman Islands potential to become the number one offshore jurisdiction for token issuers and blockchain technology companies. The first set of regulations that are relevant to the space are the anti-money laundering laws and regulations. They will apply in most cases to any company set up in Cayman to issue tokens or cryptocurrencies. This means all issuers will need to have in place controls and procedures and conduct full and complete know your client due diligence on token holders. We assist our clients as well with setting up an AML manual as that is also typically required under the AML rules. The other relevant regulations are the beneficial ownership report reporting requirements currently being implemented in Cayman and applicable to companies and limited liability companies that unless subject to an exemption, must maintain a register of beneficial ownership of such entities for purposes of UK tax and law enforcement purposes. Otherwise, aside from our immigration laws and business licensing and ownership requirements for local companies, which wouldn't apply to most token issuers or companies setting up in Cayman to conduct international business, there are only a few other relevant regulations. For security tokens, cryptocurrency funds or tokenized funds, there may be compliance requirements for tax transparency purposes, that is FATCA and CRS, the common reporting standard. Cryptocurrency funds issuing shares or interest to investors will also need to comply with the mutual funds law, just like typical hedge funds, unless the funds issue tokens to investors or there is another available exemption from registration. For security tokens, there may be considerations under the Securities Investment Business Law, and we typically would conduct an analysis as well under our Money Services Law for any clients that may issue tokens involved in payment processing applications. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Bradley. In terms of the legal structures, uh, what are you finding are the best or most ideal legal structures for your blockchain technology companies or ICOs? Sure. So although Cayman is a tax-neutral jurisdiction, making it so very attractive for businesses to conduct international business, onshore tax considerations are most important in determining the ideal structure of a business using Cayman, whether for issuing tokens or otherwise conducting international trade. Cayman has always been very responsive to the needs of its customers, so we now have many different options that can be used for token generators or ICO issuers as well as technology companies setting up in Cayman. This includes exempted companies, limited liability companies, limited partnerships, foundation companies, and even trusts. 
The other tremendous benefit that Cayman offers is the well-established infrastructure of its financial services industry to provide substance to offshore operations, including physical presence, such as in the special economic zone with Cayman Enterprise City, or a large number of sophisticated and experienced independent directors, accounting firms, law firms, and corporate administration companies. Great. Um, what about any other advice for someone looking to, to set up uh, offshore? So, along with your tax and legal advisors, you should sort out your intellectual property arrangements, which may include ownership or transfer of ownership to an offshore company, and put in place all the licensing agreements and other arrangements to make sure that your IP is owned, protected, and utilized in the most tax-efficient manner possible. Great, thanks so much. And I'll shift uh, over to you, uh, Cynthia. Um, it's certainly very exciting just to hear about the, the thriving company Thank that you've set up, uh, Hercules, uh, in Kim, the special economic zone here. Um, what, what made you choose the Cayman Islands over other jurisdictions, and how have you found the experience? Thank you very much. Um, we chose Cayman because this was advice of a former tax accounting consultant that we were using at the time, and it seemed like a very friendly jurisdiction for our type of company. And also, it seemed like the government was very open to having interaction with companies like ours. So we decided to hire an agent to get, get us set up down here. And uh, we came down in October feeling like we were going to hit the ground running. And when we got here, we realized we had nothing. We, we had nothing. <laughs> we, weren't ex we weren't set up at all. So that day became a little bit of a scavenger hunt, going from meeting to meeting, being guided from one person to another to finally a local lawyer who wasn't Brad at the time, but um, another well-known local lawyer. And he gave us our options of what might work. And at the very end, he said, well, there is another option that's uh, it's an SEZC, and that is through the CEC. And you know, all I could think was, wow, that's a lot of letters. I don't know what any of that means. So he then patiently explained that it's a special economic zone company that is helped through the process by the Cayman Enterprise City. And then he picked up the phone and set up a meeting with us to go meet Cayman Enterprise City. And when we got there, we met with Rochelle and Kayla, the two representatives that were there that day with for us. And literally the minute we sat down, we took a sigh of relief the minute that they started talking because we knew that was where we were supposed to be. For our type of company, software development on blockchain, it was a perfect fit. And one thing that uh, the CEC does is help not only guide you through the process of setting up and onboarding here, but it also provides a streamlined guide to make this as easy as possible because it's not necessarily easy. <laughs> there are a lot of paperwork, a lot of regulation, a lot of things you have to adhere to. So not only did we, they get us through this process very quickly and they helped us with our work permits, but now we also have a, a community here and a very, very tight community, a very supportive community, and we are so grateful and so appreciative of everything you've done for us. Great, well thanks Cynthia for being part of it and it's you know having the great feedback and also input into helping us understand how we make it even better. Of course. Uh, Andre, I'll, I'll shift gears uh, to yourself. The, uh, the Cayman Islands is the premier global financial hub. And as part of that, we're obviously a preeminent, preeminent jurisdiction for international investment funds, financing structures, uh, et cetera. What, why is the Cayman Islands government uh, so supportive of this new type of technology in the jurisdiction? Thank you for that question. I would answer that be with two reasons. Number one, I, I don't think there's a choice. I think this technology is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. There, in my circles, uh, not just in Cayman, but also internationally with regulators and policymakers, there are still some policy advisors who think this is a fad and this isn't going to go anywhere and it's all going to die. 
And then I end up with the same sick feeling I had in 2001 when I was a summer law student and I was assigned to two law firm partners and I was hating life because I was at the fax machine all day long because they didn't think email was gonna take off and it was all a fad. And now, as insane as that sounds, you see that email is just common life. So this isn't gonna go anywhere. There'll, there'll be some ups and downs, there'll be some teething process, some things you'll have to work through, but, it, but it's here to stay. The, the second reason is, I, I think that the benefits outweigh the risk and the concerns. So in, in, in our space of, sort of, of policy making, policy advising, and with regulators, you sometimes have to get them to see how it benefits them in order to get them on board. So a story this weekend that reminded me and illustrated this point it was Sunday was the day my wife and I decided this is the day we're gonna do our spring cleaning and clean out the garage. So we stumbled on a box and I found her old Nokia talk and text phone, which is about this big. She hanged on to that thing until 2013 and we had our first child. And the only reason that she gave it up is that we were at a, another kid's birthday party who was one and he was already on an iPad. And I looked at her and said, how are you gonna be able to monitor our child's behavior if you don't understand the technology and can't decide what, what activities you should spend a little bit more time looking at, where you need to put guardrails, when you don't know it. So the same thing I think now you're starting to see regulators evolve their thinking and say, well, hang on a second. The fact that this has permanent records, it's traceable, that's music to law enforcement and regulators' ears. And the more that that evolves, I think you'll see more institutional investors come into this space, which is Cayman's bread and butter. So for us, I think it's, it's a no-brainer. Great, and from the Cayman Islands government's uh, perspective, what are, what are the, some of the activities that you're doing to really focus on placing the jurisdiction at the forefront of FinTech and blockchain from a global perspective? Well, see, this is an odd question coming from you as, as the CEO of Cayman <laughs> Finance, now that you're moderating this panel because you're, you're acutely aware of this. But at our, at our kickoff event between government and Cayman Finance two weeks ago in New York at the Harvard Club, I think it was quite clear that it was announced by yourself and the Minister for Financial Services that this is going to be a major area of focus for Cayman in 2018. We already have started to have the industry groups within Cayman Finance, the subcommittees who are, who are looking at this legislation and trying to put together a suitable framework so that we leverage the benefits of cryptocurrencies, blockchain, and other similar technologies to make sure they're suited within our financial services industry. So I think we are gonna take that sort of knowledge from Cayman Finance's Innovation Lab, come together with our monetary authority, their policy division, and also I see representatives of the Department of Commerce and Investment here in the house, who are also deal with local licensing, pool that knowledge together to set up a suitable framework to really have this get going because you can't be, in my mind, the hedge fund capital of the world and have hundreds of private, hundreds and almost thousands of private equity funds and not get in this space, it's the future. We either gotta get our arms around it or we're gonna get left behind. Great, Fan fantastic. Uh, shifting over now to, to our special hosts. Uh, Cayman Enterprise City has seen the recent influx of uh, blockchain focused companies, which represents, I believe, roughly 25% now uh, of the SEZ over the past seven months. Um, Charlie, what, what do you see is attracting the businesses to make the move? Well, much of my answer has, <clears throat> excuse me, already been given by others on the panel, so perhaps this could be just viewed as a, as a summary. Um, but the, you know, everything, is, as you know, uh, starts with the fact that Cayman is a tax-neutral jurisdiction. Um, you know, one of the, the main things, perhaps, to point out in there is that uh, because Cayman doesn't have a uh, capital gains tax, um, a profitable exit um, can potentially be even more profitable for the founders uh, through their Cayman Islands company. Um, other reasons are that we are a first world jurisdiction, first world infrastructure, first world amenities, first world services. Uh, this is a great place to, to live and work. Uh, I think you just heard from, from Andre um, that the government is embracing the blockchain revolution and that is very, very important to, uh, to people who are considering the jurisdiction. And then finally, from our perspective, what we consider to be perhaps the most important thing is uh, us. Um, we provide a, uh, you know, a time-efficient, cost-effective mechanism for 
businesses to establish a physical presence here. And, and you know, that makes a lot of difference, a big difference to people who might be looking at competitive jurisdictions around the world. Great, great. And, and it's fantastic to reaffirm some of those positive attributes. In, in terms of some of the procedures for setting up a company in Cayman Enterprise City, can we maybe touch on that a bit? Um, sure. So the, the process is, um, as I mentioned, a fast-tracked process and typically begins with you setting up your Cayman Islands company. From there, we enter, uh, yeah, we enter into negotiations for commercial uh, space within the special, special economic zone. And typically, we look at two factors, the first one being the amount of square footage that your company will require and also the number of people that you will have working from within your space. Once we've uh, reached that agreement, we assist you with your zone trade certificate application. That's your business license. And then uh, from there, we assist you. Once that's been granted, we assist you with any applications you might need to make for uh, zone employment certificates for your people. So once you have all of that in place, the, uh, the company, you're ready to go. You can start doing business from within the Cayman Islands. And, and what sort of time frame does the process normally take? As, as, you know, as I mentioned, fast tracking means that uh, you can get this done very, very quickly. Uh, typically, it takes in the range of four to six weeks, four weeks if you're in a hurry. Uh, what usually controls how long it actually takes um, is how long it takes to gather the, uh, to put together the application documents and gather all of the, the relevant due diligence information. Great, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Cindy, over to you. As the Chief Development Officer of uh, Cayman Enterprise City, uh, what are you going to do with everyone? Can you explain the development of the, the main CEC campus? Jude, first of all, I'm just upset that I'm the last to speak, which means I've got to watch this little thing here. And I can talk for hours on uh, the future of Cayman Enterprise City. They knew this, which is why I'm sitting here now. Um, the first thing uh, is some of our pretty pictures. What are we going to do with everyone? Um, you know, as an architect, everyone looks for a dream project. And uh, I had to make mine. You know, this project is uh, uh, in the works for the last seven years. I've been researching. I've been looking into the environment that we want to create. And to create something unique, something that hasn't been done before. And I think that's, well, it's every architect's, uh, it's every architect's dream. But it's designing from the inside out. The environment is the most important part for me. It's designing a space that people can work both inside and outside. They can understand that they can live in this environment that's came in and, and actually feel like they're here. They're not in Miami. They're not in New York. They're not in the, the places that we all kind of close our eyes and we can see those offices. How do we create a collaborative community in a building, you know? And, and that's, that's a challenge. People think that, you know, you just put people in a room and they're all fine, but it's, you know, it's talking about... Uh, looking into how do we cultivate the companies that are in there? How do we help you grow? How do we use the architecture and the environment to, to help that happen? So on, on the short, and I'm kind of showing you, these are literally hot off the presses with our uh, architectural team and our designers. Um, these images uh, uh, are the beginning of a city that is 70 acres, uh, 50 acres dedicated to mixed use. Within that mixed use, we have kind of three um, main, um, uh, I guess you could say, thought centers. The first is the community itself and a co-working community. The second is um, a, an office environment where you can literally uh, have an office that fits up to six and, uh, and kind of pick a la carte. As Charlie just mentioned, that fast tracking means that we actually have you at a seat working at that point. It's not getting set up. It's literally, there's a desk, you're ready, you've got a, you've got a telephone number, you've got everything set up. So keeping that environment together. And the last is the custom product. It really does come down to exactly what you need. We are the yes company. We will create exactly what every company needs, and we can do that um, pretty quickly. So uh, that's, uh, that's my first one. Great, great. Any, any particular elements of it that you want folks in the audience to sort of be thinking about and anticipating? as we're looking forward to sort of having this type of campus to drive what we think is an innovative uh, future from a global perspective? Um, again, back to that environment. And I think this is why we're special. And I think this is why our project is special. And Charlie, he ended with, it's us. And that's the ethos of our company. So creating an environment that not only nurtures our clients, we have to listen to you. You know, we, 
We have to find out what you need. We actually go through a very detailed process of trying to understand what, our, what each of our clients need for their own growth. We try to um, kind of future-proof that by asking questions that are pretty nosy, like how are you going to grow? But that helps us understand where your next step is. We're probably one of the few companies that if you start off with two people, you don't have to worry about a third and the fourth and the fifth person. We will find the space that suits your company as it grows. We have quite a few of our clients actually in the audience today, and uh, they are kind of testament of that, starting off as one person sitting in a, in a co-working center, and that works all the way through to getting into an office. There's a graduation, and you know what? It's okay if you want to downsize. You know, we, 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 we're, we're here to work with you. Charlie's going to... Uh, if he was next to me, he'd kick me for that, but uh, it is, uh, it is, yeah, there he is. <laughs> we are here to work with you and, uh, and design that environment. Did I answer the question or do I just babble? Sir, you did a great job. Well, Cindy, Cindy thanks so much. And I think, I think certainly from, from my perspective, so I'm coming at it from the financial services angle, um, but I see the tremendous synergies uh, that we have here. And some of the things that have allowed our financial services industry to play such a prominent role globally are the types of things that we think are going to tremendously benefit in this space as well. So if we look at financial services, for example, uh, the Cayman Islands now is a domicile for probably 70% of the global hedge funds. Thousands of private equity funds, venture capital funds, real estate funds. And a lot of that is really driven by the talent of the people in the jurisdiction, our ability to access and bring in talent uh, internationally as needed, the way we work together and collaborate as a jurisdiction, taking a pragmatic approach. And I think as a jurisdiction, as you look around, it's a very cosmopolitan jurisdiction. So rather than thinking locally, we think of ourselves as global citizens. And so we're here to do our part to help things like this be very, very successful uh, in the world. So certainly a pleasure for me to be a part of this. Um, I thought we'd open it up now. Uh, we have just over seven and a half minutes, uh, maybe for some questions uh, from the audience. Thanks. So, uh, as I was saying, um, I appreciate Andre's comparison with uh, cryptocurrencies, with the internet, and, and how it developed sort of time, and, and it's certainly here to stay. Um, but just from the regulatory perspective, uh, or Cayman in particular, I guess, um, there, when there's new technology coming about, there could be a lot of, you could say, uh, snake oil salesmen. And so how do you um, go about uh, detecting that? Is that something that you would even take uh, an effort to detect? Or, uh, and how are you thinking about the regulations to protect investors potentially um, you know, in the case of a, a, a really bad ICO, for example? Great question, Robert. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly the kind of thing that we're going to have to build this year. Because there are a number of jurisdictions that I think are, are throwing up signs that they have a coin desk and they have this. And then when you, get, when you get there, I think investors are finding that there are still some barriers to entry. So one of the things that Cayman Finance is working on is that AML component. And having that in, cer in certain instances where these tokens can operate as bearer shares is having that element of having a global certified identification to get around that. So I think that there are going to be some issues like that that we're going to have to work through and think about. The important thing to my mind is some of those products that, 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 that Brad rattled off in terms of LLCs, LLPs, foundation companies, those were all innovations that the private sector brought to the government. We worked with the relevant regulator to actually get those in place and worked with onshore counterparts to make sure that it actually worked. So I see the same thing happening here, except the, probably the difference in this case is that we won't just need lawyers and accountants to feed in, we actually need the tech. So if any of you are interested in coming to Cayman and sharing your ideas, please come up to me afterwards, because I think it's really an all hands on deck approach, because as you can see, the, the best and the brightest are, are still struggling. The SEC just released some questions on, on fundraising, I think, on, on the 18th of January, that they still have questions on liquidity, valuations, and custody. So it's really going to take a collaborative approach. And, and, and an example of that, when Jude and I were in New York two weeks ago, we would participate in a conference call of a pretty major onshore law firm looking at blockchain. And I was surprised that even though we were in their offices, it was a conference call, and there were about four or five of their competitor law firms on the call all feeding in. 
if this was an established space, in my experience as a lawyer, you'd never get five competing law firms on the call at the same time. They'd all be trying to eat each other's lunch. But it's because this space is so new and everybody's trying to get their arms around it that it's going to take education and collaboration to get there to work through some of the teething problems you mentioned. Um, in the uh, blockchain space, we always talk about the alignment of incentives. Uh, and um, uh, certainly uh, talking to uh, regulators and talking about regulation for us to understand uh, on a, on a, in a global perspective what are the areas of uh, biggest attractivity is important. Um, however, we are also global, uh, mobile, and home is wherever Wi-Fi is. So what I would like to understand a little bit better is whether any of the opportunities of Cayman Tax City uh, are linked as a requirement to the other incentives that you described or are complementary and it's our choice. It's wonderful to be here and, and we love it, but if you tell me that I have to spend six months here otherwise I cannot get other benefits, I personally would, craze, would go crazy. I just couldn't resist, you know. A week or two is fine, but not more. I need New York, I need London, uh, and, and so that's, that's my question, I don't know if it's clear, to, to set up shop and then stay here as long as I want, but not, you know, not longer than I want. Um, I think I understand the question. Um, so there is uh, you know, no requirement that you spend a specific number of days in the jurisdiction. Um, we want you to spend as many days as you, as you can here, uh, because we want the knowledge transfer um, and you know just your expertise in the jurisdiction, um, but the, uh, the 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 requirement that you be here for six months out of every year in order to have access to the to the special economic zone concessions that that doesn't exist at least not at this point and we don't anticipate uh, that being uh, that being introduced. And, and, and I think even, what, oh, what sorry, even sorry. as Caymanians, yeah. we understand why you'd want to get off the island. I mean, we too yeah. go off to go shopping to New York and Miami, so we understand. <laughs> got all these detainees to go to as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I think what you'll find is it gives you the flexibility to then determine from your own standpoint or own tax status where you spend your time in the world. So that'll be the other thing is you do want to get tax advice to understand where you, where you can and cannot be staying in the world. I mean, you know what? I'll give you an example of what we've done. We do have one employee on island full time. And we also have our CTO who comes on, <laughs> Logan, who comes on and off as he's developing and we're gonna launch everything from Cayman. My husband and I have board meetings here and we, uh, I think we've come every month for a couple of days here or there, few, I think, right? Since October. Um, but we personally have just moved to Puerto Rico. So as US residents, and, but we have offices in Houston, Oklahoma, Nevada, where else? I mean, so we're, we can't be, you know, so it, it, it's, it's a perfect situation for, for us. But finally, I think what's very important is that we're creating an environment that would, in the future, equal that that you'd find in New York. We're trying to create a community of people. And I think when it comes down to it, what are we all searching for? You know, if, if you're going to New York, you're searching for like-minded people. And if we can create that hub here, then you're going to find those things here on a regular basis, and you'll be putting us on your on your um, on your rotisserie. You know, you're gonna, or I'm going to New York. Oh, I've got back back to Cayman, and that's our goal. And and I forgot to mention the last thing is that we're actually breaking ground on our first two buildings this year. So, you know, this uh, this is um we're we're startups too. You know, we 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 started this. Um, uh, seven years ago, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's grown into the fact that we are now building our campus, which we feel will attract people to stay, and that's our goal. And, and, and believe me, you'll say that, oh, you know, that's this place too small, but uh, you'll find it's not. It's actually, there's a, so many people, so many connections, so many, um, you know, relationships that are here, business relationships, uh, that you'll find that, that we're not as small as you think. Great. Just want to say thank you so much to the audience and thank you to the great panel. Thank you, Jude. Thank you. Thank you.